Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. It's January 6, 2023. And I have a few um, items here on the bench that we're gonna take a look at today. Just getting caught up with necks, mostly. Um, I re redesigned my peg, head, my peg heads. So I'm gonna show you those. Um, we're gonna um, make a neck today, cut the scarf joint, and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy it. All right, so laid out here, I have like the oldest to the newest peg head designs. And I thought I would just kind of walk you through a quick history of what the peg head designs were and what they are today. So when I first started building guitars at Roberto Venn in Phoenix back in 2003, this was the basic design that I came up with. Um, I, I do have a couple guitars like this. I've sold a couple guitars with this headstock design. Um, I've never made a seven string like this, but I have made the eight string. And then I had another variant of that design and I never actually used this one. This was an eight string. I was doing whatever I could to make the headstock shorter. So I added this curve into it and that brings us to the next um, design. This is what I called the Zeddy headstock. And you can see here, it has a, a curve here for the six, seven, and even the eight string designs. The only thing I didn't really like about them is what I announced in a video the other day was that the strings did not go directly from the nut up to the post as a straight line parallel to the center line. You can see it kind of fans out like that. And I wanted to get away from that. Um, another thing I wanted to get away from was the extreme curve here. When you add the tuning machines, um, a new player well, anybody that picked up a guitar like this, you would notice a difference because of the way that the tuning machines are aligned. So it's not it's not a familiar feel. It's something you have to get used to, and I did not like that. So those were the two reasons I uh, upgraded this, which I just did this week. And that brings us to these guys. So you can see here, this is what I showed a couple days ago in a video. Now the strings go from the nut straight up to the post, parallel with the center line, all the way up for the six, seven, and eight string designs. However, once we get into the eight string realm, it starts looking a little bit weird. It looks, it looks a lot weird, I thought. And uh, a lot of other companies, they do do this. I just think it looks stupid, so I wanted to get away from it. Uh, we still have a slight curve here. I wanted to keep that integrated in the design. I didn't want it to be perfectly straight. If you take this center, this uh, straight line, the straight edge, and you go like this, now go ahead and Google solar guitars. It's the same thing. And th this little curve is the only thing that makes it different. So I wanted to uh, throw this in the trash at that point and start over. So that's what I did. Um, yesterday, basically I designed, I, I wanted to get back to kind of this design, but I also really liked this design. So I did like a, a halfway between. So now we have this. This is the new design. We've got the curve here. It still looks like the Zeddy headstock, but it also goes back to the original, but it looks way better in my opinion. The strings also go straight, and this is pretty much, hopefully, the final design for the six. Here's the seven, you know, looking the same, keeping the same style. And the eight, this was the tricky thing. I wanted to get away from that ugly, really long, ugly look. So I found a solution to that. So here's a seven and then the eight. You can see it still keeps the same design. However, now we have, we have the, the strings going straight parallel with the uh, center line, but now we have them down here. And not only is this the seventh and eighth string, but now we can, if I wanna do a nine string, I can extend this curve down further, put another tuning machine here, and we can do nine strings, we can do 10 strings. This opens up a lot of options for us. So that is um, the basic evolution of the peg head designs. Um, these guys here, I wanted 
um, a three on a side option and a four on a side option and a three, four for the seven strings. These things will still be available on the interactive luthier shop on clutchguitars.com once that thing gets uh, put together and put on the website when you want to order your guitar. But that's pretty much the evolution of the peg heads. And this is the brand new January 2023 version. And I'm, I'm actually really happy with that. All right, that's enough talking. Let's uh, do some work. I also went ahead and finished up this epoxy job on this maple burl. You can see here I've got like a little line of black sand I put in there and then some I sprinkled some gold uh, nuggets and pickers and flakes and stuff in there. Um, I don't know how deep they sunk into the epoxy, but we'll find out after we sand it and that'll clean all this up and make it look nice. So we'll see how that turns out. Just a fun little experiment. All right, let me clean up this mess and then we can uh, start working on this succubus six neck. All right, before we start making that neck over there that I just mentioned, um, I do have all these guys sanded and smoothed out and ready for the planer or the, uh, the joiner. I still have to remove these little registration pins before I run them through the joiner. I'm just gonna grab those. I'm gonna chisel them out, grab them with the pliers and, and just yank them out because we don't want to damage our blade on our joiner. I only have registration pins on these two because this one here is a book match and this one here, um, I had to make sure that it would fit because of this weird cutout here. Um, the, these guys are all good. So yeah, there's only five necks here and we're doing six guitars. I added that sixth guitar towards the end here. And now we have to catch this neck up to those. Um, so basically we're gonna do, what we're doing here, six string succubus. So I just take the entire template, put it on the edge here, and then I made a mark right there. So I know where to draw my line. Now I'm just gonna take a square, fix that up, and uh, then we'll cut it on the regular arm saw. Here we go, world's most expensive pencil sharpener. Not even plugged in. So for pretty much every step in building guitars, you always want to start with your center line. So let's draw a center line on this neck. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin it down to where it's not as wide because this piece of walnut, it's over four inches wide, which means I cannot run it. I cannot cut the scarf joint with my radial arm saw because it'll bottom out. So I need to bring this thing down to a under four inches, basically. So I'm just gonna roughly lay this thing out so I know basically where I can go with it. And we're getting pretty close. I'm just gonna quickly draw the neck on here so I can see how much we can take off. So it looks like um, right about here, we can take off about that much and be safe. And then on this side, we could probably take off an eighth of an inch. So we have an eighth of an inch here, a quarter inch there. So we can take three eighths of an inch off over at the table saw. All right, we've got it table sawed nice and parallel with the joined edge. We're gonna mark the top here where the peg head ends. And we're gonna be able to hopefully cut all the way through. It's still at just about four inches. All right, so right here is the line for where the peg head ends. And right here is the blade coming down. Now, I have the camera set up so you can see that I want the blade to end on this side. If it doesn't cut all the way through, we can still fix it on the bandsaw and then uh, plane it flat. So um, before I do this cut, I have to clamp it steady. And everything is clamped down as you can see here. And yeah, here we go. Let me make sure this is tight. It did cut all the way through, but right here, there's a little lip, but we'll be able to clean this up really easily. And that's a nice clean cut right there. So this gets glued on like this to make a scarf joint. 
Yeah, another little note to my future self. I took a piece of scrap maple and I put it in here because this walnut, um, it was at uh, three quarters, was it three quarters or seven eighths? I think it looks like three quarters. No, it's at seven eighths. Yeah, this walnut was at seven eighths when I cut it. And I usually cut it at one inch and that's what this jig is made for. But if I'm doing stuff at seven eighths, I just slide this in there and then it makes it fit nice and tight. So um, yeah, there you go. Also with eight string guitars, don't know if we're gonna be able to do it now, but before, now we should be good. We're under four inches here for an eight string. So we should be able to cross this out because the eight string design was too wide with my previous designs. So these new designs fix another thing, which is awesome. All right. Um, now we just got to clean up this surface and glue it on and we'll finish up the video doing that. All right, so I just took the square and went straight across and you can see that there's a slight angle there. Same thing over here. There's meat right here and then this is where it starts. So there's a slight angle. If I was to glue this on right now, it would be a little bit crooked. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this over to the belt sander and I'm just going to sand it straight across by hand. I do have a jig for this um, somewhere. Where is it? Yeah. yeah. Right here, this is a little jig for, for these things. Basically, I just set this in there and then run it through the thickness sander and then the sander would flatten it out perfectly. But unfortunately, right now, my thickness sander is dead again. Um, I have the maintenance mechanic coming over uh, next week. He's gonna it's, it's the motor for the conveyor belt. It was built in, it says 1993. So it was probably due for a new motor anyway. It just started slowing down and then it stopped working all together. Anyway, that's why I can't use this machine. So we'll just take it over here to the belt sander, do it by hand and we'll be good to go. Okay, so now we should be able to clamp this perfectly and everything will line up. So, um, just get a little bit of glue. This is just regular wood glue, aliphatic resin, tight bond. I use four C clamps. This is the tricky part right here. So when I clamp these, the first clamp, there's four clamps. The first clamp is gonna go halfway, like at the halfway point. The reason I do this is to prevent it from sliding when I start tightening it down. If it's grabbing both sides, it ain't gonna be able to slide. Sometimes it does, it's just one of those things. This is very, this is pretty tricky actually, so. This one I'm gonna clamp lightly because I don't wanna knock this one out. Then I'm gonna flip it, do the same thing up here. Lightly, just so I see a little bit of squeeze out up here. And the final one is gonna go right here. And if nothing slips at this point, it didn't I can go back and start tightening down a little bit more and I have extra clamps I'm gonna go ahead and just put an extra clamp right there if we see squeeze out we're good yeah there's some squeeze out there Let's double check the back squeeze out all the way across. Now it's just waiting for, you know, till tomorrow at this time. At that point, um, we should be 100% safe to 
start cleaning this thing up. We can um, add the peg head veneer and that's another day of drying. So that's pretty much all I can do and show you guys today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you liked it, let me know and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.